I Nasheen Hussain welcome you all in an exclusive guest lecture on code of conduct of media by Mr Kamaluddin Tipu acting chairman Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority PEMRA organized by the Department of Media Studies and Social Sciences First I'll tell about PEMRA what is PEMRA what's its background and uh, uh, what's the code of conduct why we need code of conduct and what's the history of making of code of conduct and what is the politics of code of conduct when i'll go along the presentation i'll tell you you know how the pembra law you know it is also in the pembra law i think before i started that it is quite modern because for the first time it was considered that we have to give the choice to the people access to information with a constitutional right of course with responsibility so this covers that this doesn't give and there is no censorship here we regulate through licensing through terms and condition through contents uh, by monitoring the contents and the code of conduct so it's a very modern law and it has given a lot of forums uh, the authority which has representation from all the province provinces civil society the council of complaints in all the provinces they are also uh, composed of lot of civil society members so this was a small background i wanted to give you before i start a presentation so the pembra was established in 2002 march to facilitate you should i should i mean as a bds students and regulate establishment establishment and operation of the broadcast media and distribution services distribution services the cable tv operators direct to home mmds there are lot of technologies iptv smart tv uh, ptcl so we this was to regulate the establishment and operation of the broadcast media not to control the control was done uh, by other means before that and i must tell you one thing that in the modern democracies and modern countries uh, there is no ministry of information it's only uh, in some of the countries this is a relic of the second world war uh, because we are not that free so this was a attempt and it attempted in 2002 and one of the architect of this law was uh, javed jabbar saab and uh, because he is a very enlightened and liberal person so in that era it was possible to enforce this uh, to enact this modern law it was an ordinance later it was uh, uh, in the parliament there was an amendment in 2007 so what does pembra mean pembra has a board of directors it's called authority so it has 12 members uh, the chairman uh, is the head and uh, then we have four ex officio members sector information interior chairman pta pakistan telecommunication authority and chairman fbr because we also charge regulatory fee tariffs so they are also members and then we have private members one from the federal government and four from the provinces and the executive member is a full time member it's one of the members if there's a board of directors this is equivalent to the ceo of a company the mandate this is very important for the mass communication students to improve the standards of information education and entertainment this is our mandate then you 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 see you uh, you will see lot of good words facilitate enlarge ensure so the enlarge what enlarge the choice available to the people as vice chancellor have said that there was only ptv available and there was very limited choice it was only uh, according to some of the people only giving one word view maybe the version of the government maybe the government of the uh, version of the establishment so the constitutional right of the people to access to information so that was also the mandate that we enlarge the choice and how did we enlarge we give a uh, lot of satellite tv licenses and also niche uh, and thematic for example sports some people wants to watch sports and some people want to watch documentaries the cartoons so th this was to enlarge the you know the choice given to the people before it was limited and it was segmented and some people say it was very good now it's things have gone haywire but still it's enlarging the choice then facilitate 
devolution of responsibility and power to the grassroots improving ex the access of people to mass media at the local and community level and how did we reach the community level maybe not this thing but we have fm radio stations 199 of them and we are trying to give more licenses now and it has a radius of about 40 kilo uh, not radio but the diameter it can work on the diameter of 40 kilometers and that is a community level uh, uh, you know, media we have uh, introduced. Before that, there was a Radio Pakistan on short and medium wave. This is a FM, so it's the frequency modulated. Then accountability, transparency, and good governance by optimizing the free flow of information. You might have heard, you know, in the prime time, no, nowhere in the world you will see, you know, the talk shows coming on prime time. It's always the entertainment. But here the people like it. And, uh, but, and sometimes they start fighting on, uh, PTV and some of the questions are very loaded and very, um, uh, you know, very closed kind of questions they have. But still, you will also realize that this media, uh, you know, the eye over every department and every person, this has also helped in, you know, ensuring transparency and accountability. Uh, this is one of the effects. We will look at the negative effects, but the positive effects is that it's the people are now very careful, and the government departments are very careful. The authorities are careful. The establishment is careful. So this is one of the positive aspects, and uh, and uh, this is one of the mandates we have. Uh, so how we perform our functions? We regulate broadcast media. Broadcast is satellite TV. The state broadcasters which is PTV, this is, not, this is not in our ambit of control. So they, are, they have independent, you know, their law, and uh, it's uh, managed by the sector information. He's the chairman of that thing, and they have the MD. But apart from that, the, all the private media, uh, FM radio station, cable TV operators, uh, cable uh, TV operators, uh, now the new technology, DTH, the, uh, the distribution we are introducing very shortly, so they are all uh, regulated by PEMRA. Uh, then the distribution of foreign, there we have our own satellite channels which are uplinked from Pakistan. Most of the hub of that uh, whole activity is in Karachi and uh, followed by Lahore and few of channels are uplinking for Islamabad. But uh, uh, this is, uh, up, this they uplink from here. But there are a lot of channels, for example, BBC, Cartoon Network, they, they have the content which are downlinked here and then you know they are broadcast. So we also give the uh, landing rights, we call it, uh, landing rights permission to all the foreign channels. We make rules, uh, regulations, code of conduct. I will tell you actually it's the mandate of the authority to make code of conduct, but the government is always involved in doing that. Then PEMRA laws, then implement policy guideline, and government can also give us policy directive under section uh, five of PEMRA Act. By the way, uh, uh, all these laws, I will not go into details, they are on our website. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be mentioned the website www.pemra.gov.pk. So if you are interested in uh, knowing more about the laws, they are there. And these are some of the laws. Uh, Ordinance 2002, then it was amended as PEMRA Act 2007. Then it was followed by the rules by which then we have Council of Complaints is one of the important forums because when the government decided to open up the media and that government was not very democratic at that time, and they, they said that there will be a lot of people who will, I mean, privacy issues, so many other issues, some media trial issues, you know. So they made a, a forum at all regional levels. That is, we have a Council of Complaints in Karachi. It, I will show you uh, later slide, six members, all are eminent citizens, nominated by the government, and only one of the secretaries is uh, uh, our uh, RGM, Region General Manager here. Then we have distribution service, that's, and then we have regulations, uh, radio, TV, and then we have a, I will discuss code of conduct. This is our presence. We have uh, main offices in all the provincial capitals, in in Punjab, we have two regional offices because it's a very huge and uh, market. Um, but the, hu the biggest market is Karachi, the only Karachi. And after that, because it's geographical restriction, we have two regions, Multan and Lahore. And rest uh, we have uh, uh, in 
Peshawar we have a regional office, Quetta, Karachi, and uh, then we have also our presence in Gilgit and Baldistan. Uh, apart from that, we have <laughs> sub-offices also. We have it here in Sakkar, in Hyderabad, and in Quetta we don't have any uh, other, Rajasthan, and we have in KPK also, and Punjab some sub-offices. Uh, DA Khan, Aptabad, Gujranwala, Sargoda, Faisalabad, these are our, some of the sub-offices. So electronic media, how big is that? How much, it, uh, what is its penetration? How much ho household is covered? Uh, what is the penetration of FM media? So next slides will. So we have uh, 91 satellite TV channels. Most of them are up and working. Some of them, they have some operational problems. And we have given landing rights to 25 channels. I mentioned BBC, CNN, they have work on landing rights here. The cable TV is, the penetration is 4200. And uh, cable uh, operators, they are very powerful people because they also sometimes dictate their terms to the channel owners. <coughs> then we have 199 FMDD stations. And we also have this uh, technology called MMDS, Sun TV, if somebody uh, has, uh, that sub subscribes to that. So we have this six, it's called MMDS. It's called, in layman terms, it's a wireless uh, cable. It's through radio waves, uh, they transmit the signals. Then we have one IPTV, Internet Protocol TV. It's uh, with the PTCL. And uh, they, they are giving as a smart TV, their product name is. Then we have also issued uh, mobile TV. We have licensing also. This is a value added service. And you can watch on mobile. And we have also given to the audio. Uh, you can w uh, also uh, listen to the radio uh, through your mobile uh, platform. <coughs> so, uh, if you see in the bottom, uh, the licensing we do, we used to do on case-to-case -case basis and after 2010, we have not issued any license on the satellite TV. So, this is a bifurcation, you know, that uh, we gave maximum licenses in 2008. And uh, 2009, uh, 17, uh, 2007, uh, you know, these are the, and total is 91. So this is how the penetration of the satellite TV is. This is FM radio station. Uh, I don't want to go into details. Uh, actually, this is done most of the bidding process because we, case to case, there are a lot of implications and political pressures. So most of this FM was done on bidding. So the last phase was, and we are now giving to more of the, uh, you know, identified in the areas in Sen than Punjab, for example, in the rural districts, we are giving more licenses uh, beginning next year. Uh, we have two categories, commercial and non-commercial. Uh, non-commercial, you have one here, which is, uh, you know, it's uh, for the, yeah, nah. so 96 months. It is actually for training purposes and also the camp, we call campus radio. Uh, it is a campus radio and uh, you have the programs here and it is also for the training purposes of the mass uh, media uh, students. Cable, this is a penetration of cable. 2002, we inherited 900 licenses from PTA and then we have reached 4200. And we now have stopped uh, doing licensing in urban areas and rural areas. We are also very reluctant only where there is no license we issue because this business has also uh, to be regulated now because because of the competition there are a lot of problems now it's a problem of investment and it's one small area if you more than one uh, it is economically business wise it's not feasible so we are also uh, restricting this licensing this is just uh, uh, what is an investment cumulative investment uh, we have uh, this is a from the economic survey of pakistan the 3.5 billion it is total investment for the last, uh, since starting from 2002-03. And it is giving direct and in, un, indirect employment at about 200,000 people. And we uh, forecast that by the end of this year, it will be about more than 4 billion. And if we start licensing of the DTH, which is direct to home, uh, direct to home means that uh, it's uh, you have a small dish, it can 
uh, if you have uh, the subscription, you can receive signals through set-up box direct from the satellite. And we expect that uh, it will also uh, fetch, uh, you know, the price of about uh, three, four billion rupees. But uh, we are not sure, and it's a bidding process, and we uh, hope to complete by the end of this year. The authority has approved uh, the report of the international consultant, and uh, we hope to have uh, very soon this also new technology. Licensing criteria, I don't want to go into this detail. This is how you get a license and what are the requirements. So the only thing I can tell you, though, you have to have a security and ex exchange commission. You have to have register there. And there is a, a minimum requirements of paid up capital. And then you can, foreign holding can only be 49%. In the mobile, uh, sorry, in the telecom sector, the 100% foreign investment can be done, not in broadcast. And that is a legitimate question you should ask why. Then we should have a technical and financial feasibility. The licensing procedure not required at your level, but this is how we done it and do licensing. Uh, media, I mean, it's a lot of media is a lot of gray area. It's not a black and white. And when you have a media power, uh, you have a lot of power. Uh, in the old, uh, you know, the sources of power, uh, traditional sources of power, if you go on the political science now, from the, from the mass media to political science, they are uh, traditional in our country, their sources of power are, for example, bureaucracy, military, then maybe the landed, uh, some feudals or some political parties. But for, for the last about 10 to 15 years, they're two other sources of power has emerged. One is the judiciary and the other is media. Although some of the traditional powers are trying to co-opt these powers, but still they have their own standing now. At the same time, if you concentrate power in a few media houses, that is also detrimental. They dictate their terms. So it's intention of this also uh, law that there should not be concentration of media power and event. So that's why we have restricted, you know, the number of licenses you can have. And then FM radio, a one person can have four satellite licenses, one media house, four FM and two landing nets permission. And they cannot go into distribution. Distribution, they cannot have a cable operations, you know, license, a DTH license. So this is uh, how uh, we are ensuring. Before this law, 2002 ordinance, uh, if you have a print media, uh, you know, you cannot have a satellite TV. So that's why Geo started uh, from Dubai and they had a landing rights, not the license. So this is, uh, and in 2007 they changed it. So now they are uplinking from here. Future plans. Uh, we, we had held some seminars here, digitalization of existing uh, cable network that uh, there is an international telecommunication union. Uh, we have committed, Pakistan, government of Pakistan committed that we will convert to digitalization by the end of 2014. Whether it's possible or not, I don't think so it will be possible. But actually what we are targeting is the big areas, Karachi, Lahore, and urban centers. We, will, we have uh, had a lot of conferences and they have started working on this thing. And we hope that in the most of these areas we'll have, we'll achieve these objectives. Then we are also in uh, DTH, I mentioned direct to home. We have the international consultant were hired. Uh, he has given his reports, the authority has approved and we will start bidding. And then we'll have this new technology plat platform. What will happen when we come this thing? What's the difference between this and the others? This is also another thing. What, how this technology differs from the existing one? Number one. If you, uh, the frequency is made in megahertz. So if you can have, for example, in 10 megahertz, if you can have four channels, in this technology, we can have maybe six, seven, eight channels. So this is one of the benefits because frequency is a very scarce resource in Pakistan. So second, it will be digital signal. The quality will be better, parental control. So there are a lot of benefits of this. And then it's very easy to uh, give information how many subscribers they have. 
So this technology and uh, you can have also in remote areas and uh, some of the channel owners, they don't uh, get any, uh, you know, uh, money or any, uh, you know, fee from the cable operators. So this will also, this subscription based, that you can also uh, have a subscription of this bouquet when they develop this thing. Then we also plan this digital audio broadcast, licensing digital terrestrial TV, then satellite radio. We are working on that, but not much has done so far. We are concentrated in DTH. I already mentioned that we have electronic guide, parental control, regulatory control, super audio and video quality, enhanced quality of TV channel signals, higher channel carrying capacity. We also, I, I mentioned that we have a council of complaints and uh, uh, we have five persons and this is just uh, to tell you that what kind of, we have a web based also uh, complaint system if you have a, any problem with the channel, whether they are using any derogatory language, whether they have, uh, uh, you know, violated any PEMRA law or any code of conduct, uh, you know, provisions, then you can file a complaint. We have a 24 hour uh, call center and uh, it's a 0800 PEMRA. If you call them and hopefully uh, you can also electronically give your complaint and you can also send us uh, at our regional office and headquarters and you can also send us emails also. So these are a number of complaints we have received and we have rectified. Some, most of the complaints are the quality control issues and some of the complaints are uh, code of conduct. First of all, uh, the code of in our section 19.5, uh, it's the authority shall devise. It's the responsibility of authority to make a code of conduct. And we have done that. It's a part of an action. Uh, and it's uh, in the, it's called Schedule A. If you go on a website, you can find it there. I will briefly go through it. I have slides there. But you know, when uh, the satellite TV channels and the cable operator, the FM radio, they get a license from us. It is a license is about 33, 30 to 33 pages long document. And it has, uh, we sign it. It's a contract between our licensing wing and licensee. They both sign it. And they have signed this code of conduct. Then there are other terms of conditions also. So they have signed it. But you see in 2006, they felt very constrained so they say that we want a self-regulation. We, we don't want any control, you know, we will, we will uh, make our own, uh, you know, code of conduct. So that's the, yeah, when they got some power and this, this you know, uh, self-regulation and then uh, the code of conduct is not good enough, this politics started. So, uh, one of the things, the, although there are a lot of things, and uh, Javed Jabarsa might have told you this thing, that uh, the PEMBRA law was also a result of some struggles, and most of the good points were incorporated, because we cannot just switch off any channel or distribution service unless certain procedures are adopted. We give them notice, we give them personal hearing, and before any revocation or suspension, we have to go through Council of Complaints, which consists of a lot of uh, majority of them are the civil society members. So this procedure was not be before this in any of the law. So I think this is a very modern law. And at the same time, we should also give some responsibility to the owners because they're also Pakistanis. They also know what the norms they have to follow. So this was a, but you know, in 2009, there was a, there was a Justice Fakhuduji Ibrahim, they, they started this committee to have, uh, 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 you know, revise the code of conduct. And you will see that there's not much difference between code of conducts. It's just a politics because they say there's something wrong and you project something. This is also sociological phenomena, social, maybe in social sciences, you can say that you project to something else. The problem is somewhere there. We don't self-reflect. So they say that there's a problem and luminar, I mean, Ayer Rahman, Shafkat, Javed, Jabarsa, Mehdi Hassan, who is a still over the Council of Complaints, Chairman in Lahore, Zafrullah Khan and Khan. They, uh, they had a series of meetings and uh, they drafted a code at 2010, uh, which was given to the Ministry of Information. Then after it was done, then the PBA said there's still something wrong. And uh, maybe some of the channels, they also have a competition. They say, no, no, this is not wrong. They will cut. 
so they all they before it was delivered there was problems there so this is a code of conduct quickly no derogatory remarks religion sect community everybody agrees uh, anything pornographic obscene or indecent then we have to define these kind of things where the art starts and where the obscenity starts then abusive comment anything defamatory knowing false this is very clear if you if it's your uh, media trial is bad you should have solid evidence to before you can uh, air anything you know uh, encourage and cite violence you know you cannot broadcast as you know the broadcast is that you talk and it is goes to the millions of people the narrow cost thing you know the telecommunication telephone this thing internet you know you just call to one or two persons so it has a lot of implication as far as you know effect on society is concerned so it can affect the law and order situation one wrong call and the, the city can erupt come out to contempt of court aspirations against judiciary integrity of armed forces of pakistan very right if a general cannot come on the tv to defend himself do not do not discuss the general if judge cannot come do not discuss the ju uh, judge discuss the matter not a personality that kind of thing maligns or slanders any individual or person in certain groups segments of social public and moral life of the country uh, basic culture values morality and good manners so those are the, all those good things we have put in there but still it's a framework it's a direction there is no black and white here abets any offense denigrates men and women through the depiction in any manner denigrates children glorify crime or criminals very obvious contains material which may be in relation to pakistan other countries material which are against ideology of pakistan islamic values uh, programs meant for children uh, do not contain objectionable language and we have also advertisement code of conduct also pakistan advertisement society which is based here they have seen it and they have also devised their own and uh, we are working closely with them and they also work with the pakistan pba pakistan broadcasting association legal punitive powers uh, under uh, 29 uh, section uh, uh, we have uh, power to impose fine uh, but we have a procedure before that to do that uh, it has to go through different forums regulatory conflicts one is the code of conduct issue we have discussed in and then we have a advertisement limits also this is also an issue which is uh, pakistan's very government very keen on that i don't know why but they we have a segment of 15 minutes you should have not more than 3 minutes so it uh, they say it destroys the viewers experience but in us they don't limit this thing for a reason i will tell you when you have a question for about that then the lack of consistent provision of foreign content 10% they have allowed i don't know why why not 5% why not 20% it was when the authority was created it was, it was learning so they had this limit now out of this 10% we have 6% indian content they can show and 4% international this is mostly violated it is because the viewers want some indian content to watch media in pakistan wants complete freedom they don't want regulator that is one thing they are commercial entity they are here to make money that you should always keep in mind and it is it is a uh, very difficult uh, for us to enforce certain laws unauthentic reporting in the quest of rating rating system is also not done by us it's the private companies media logic and pba they do it so in order to enhance the ratings they have to go through so many things subjects matter they discuss which is very problematic for us in the terms and condition of the license they have to have a lag time delay mechanism we call it they have to have at least 8 seconds delay mechanism so that the all the material which is broadcast it has to go through editorial scrutiny and if somebody says anything word that could be you know deleted from the transmission so but still the pba last meeting they said that we are enforcing this thing i hope by one month even the karachi coc has taken this notice that the pba should uh, all the channels should have delay mechanism in the transmission no live thing uh, depiction of blood gore mutilated bodies it has gone down they used to show a lot you know uh, headless bodies but they have gone down now so i am happy a projection of terrorist criminals elements in band outfits 
So that is about all. Thank you very much.